The Uyghur or Uyghur language, Yair Tili Ujijur Tili Uyghur Tili, Uyur Tili or Yifurch, Ujijurk Uyghurshe, Uyurkyu, formerly known as Eastern Turkey, is a Turkic language with 10 to 15 million speakers, spoken primarily by the Uyghur people in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of Western China. Significant communities of Uyghur speakers are located in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan, and various other countries have Uyghur-speaking expatriate communities. Uyghur is an official language of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, and is widely used in both social and official spheres, as well as in print, radio, and television, and is used as a common language by other ethnic minorities in Xinjiang. Uyghur belongs to the Karlik branch of the Turkic language family, which also includes languages such as Uzbek. Like many other Turkic languages, Uyghur displays vowel harmony and agglutination, lacks noun classes or grammatical gender, and is a left-branching language with subject-object verb word order. More distinctly Uyghur processes include, especially in northern dialects, vowel reduction and umlauting. In addition to influence of other Turkic languages, Uyghur has historically been influenced strongly by Persian and Arabic, and more recently by Mandarin Chinese and Russian. The modified Arabic-derived writing system is the most common and the only standard in China, although other writing systems are used for auxiliary and historical purposes. Unlike most Arabic-derived scripts, the Uyghur Arabic alphabet has mandatory marking of all vowels due to modifications to the original Perso-Arabic script made in the 20th century. Two Latin and one Cyrillic alphabet are also used, though to a much lesser extent. The Arabic and Latin alphabets both have 32 characters. History The Middle Turkic languages are the direct ancestor of the Karlik languages, including Uyghur and the Uzbek language. Kagan Eric wrote that modern Uyghur is not descended from Old Uyghur, rather, it is a descendant of the Karlik language spoken by the Kara Khanid Khanate. According to Gerard Clausen, Western Uyghur is considered to be the true descendant of Old Uyghur, and is also called Neo Uyghur. Modern Uyghur is not a descendant of Old Uyghur, but is descended from the Zakani language described by Mahmud al-Kashgari in Diwanu el luga al-Turk. According to Frederick Cohn, modern Uyghur and Western Uyghur belong to entirely different branches of the Turkic language family, respectively the Southeastern Turkic languages and the Northeastern Turkic languages. The Western Uyghur language, although in geographic proximity, is more closely related to the Siberian Turkic languages in Siberia. Robert Dankoff wrote that the Turkic language spoken in Kashgar and used in Kara Khanid works was Karlik, not Old Uyghur. Robert Barclay Shaw wrote, In the Turkish of Kashgar and Yarkand, which some European linguists have called Uyghur, a name unknown to the inhabitants of those towns, who know their tongue simply as Turkey. This would seem in many cases to be a misnomer as applied to the modem language of Kashgar. Sven Hadin wrote, in these cases it would be particularly inappropriate to normalize to the East Turkish literary language, because by so doing one would obliterate traces of national elements which have no immediate connection with the Kashgar Turks, but on the contrary are possibly derived from the ancient Uyghurs. Probably around 1077, a scholar of the Turkic languages, Mahmud al-Kashgari from Kashgar in modern-day Xinjiang, published a Turkic language dictionary and description of the geographic distribution of many Turkic languages, Dewan ul lughat al-Turk English, Compendium of the Turkic Dialects, Uyghur, Tri Tiller Divani Turki Tilar Dewani. The book, described by scholars as an extraordinary work, Documents the rich literary tradition of Turkic languages, it contains folk tales including descriptions of the functions of shamans and didactic poetry propounding moral standards and good behavior, besides poems and poetry cycles on topics such as hunting and love, and numerous other language materials. Other Kara Khanid writers wrote works in the Turkey Karlik Kakani language. Yusuf Kas Hajib wrote the Kutadgu Bilag. Ahmad bin Mahmud Yukenaki Ahmed bin Mahmud Yuneki Ahmed ibn Mahmud Yuneki Yazan Edib Ahmed B. Mahmud Yuneki W. T. R. Edip Ahmed Yuneki wrote the Haba al Hakaiku Hbt al Kaik Hibit al Hakayak Hibit al Hakayak Hibit al Hakayak at Bet Udiarisis al Hakayak W. T. R. Adibitul Hakayak
Middle Turkic languages, through the influence of Perso-Arabic after the 13th century, developed into the Chagatai language, a literary language used all across Central Asia until the early 20th century. After Chagatai fell into extinction, the standard versions of Uyghur and Uzbek were developed from dialects in the Chagatai-speaking region, showing abundant Chagatai influence. Uyghur language today shows considerable Persian influence as a result from Chagatai, including numerous Persian loanwords. Modern Uyghur religious literature includes the Taskira, biographies of Islamic religious figures and saints. The Taskira is a genre of literature written about Sufi Muslim saints in Altashar. Written sometime in the period between 1700 and 1849, the Chagatai language modern Uyghur Taskira of the Four Sacrificed Imams provides an account of the Muslim Karakhanid War against the Khotanese Buddhists, containing a story about Imams. From Madain City possibly in modern-day Iraq came four Imams who traveled to help the Islamic conquest of Khotan, Yarkand, and Kashgar by Yusuf Qadir Khan, the Karakhanid leader. The shrines of Sufi saints are revered in Altashar as one of Islam's essential components and the Taskira literature reinforced the sacredness of the shrines. Anyone who does not believe in the stories of the saints is guaranteed hellfire by the Taskaras. It is written, "...and those who doubt their holinesses the Imams will leave this world without faith, and on Judgment Day their faces will be black." In the Taskira of the Four Sacrificed Imams Shah translated extracts from the Tazkirchil Bugra on the Muslim Turkey war against the infidel Khotan. The Turkey language Tadkara i Kwajigan was written by M. Sadiq Kashgari. Historical works like the Tariq i Amniya and Tariq i Hamidi were written by Musa Sayarami. The Qing dynasty commissioned dictionaries on the major languages of China, which included Chagatai Turkey language, such as the Pentaglot Dictionary. Shaw and Christian missionaries such as George W. Hunter missionary, Johannes Aveteranian, Magnus Backlund, Nils Frederick Hoyer, Father Hendricks, Joseph Masruer, Anna Masruer, Albert Anderson missionary, Gustav Albert, Stina Martinson, John Tornquist, Gosta Riquette, Oscar Hermansen, the convert to Christianity Noor Luke, Harold Whitaker, and Turkologist Gunnar Jaring studied the Uyghur language and wrote works on it, calling it, Eastern Turkey. Shah wrote in his book that it was Europeans at his time who called the language Uyghur, while the native inhabitants of Yarkand and Kashgar did not call it by that name and but called it Turkey, and Shah wrote that the name Uyghur was a misnomer when referring to Kashgar's language. A Turkish convert to Christianity, Johannes Aveteranian went to China to spread Christianity to the Uyghurs. Yakup Istapan, Wurkaishi, and Alamujiang Yimiti are other Uyghurs who converted to Christianity. The Bible was translated into the Kashgari dialect of Turkey Uyghur, the historical term Uyghur was appropriated for the language that had been known as Eastern Turkey by government officials in the Soviet Union in 1922 and in Xinjiang in 1934. Sergei Malov was behind the idea of renaming Turkey to Uyghurs. The use of the term Uyghur has led to anachronisms when describing the history of the people. In one of his books the term Uyghur was deliberately not used by James Millward. The name Kakaniya was given to the Karluks who inhabited Kashgar and Balasagan. The inhabitants were not Uyghur, but their language has been retroactively labeled as Uyghur by scholars. The Karakhanids called their own language the Turk or Kashgar language, and did not use Uyghur to describe their own language. Uyghur was used to describe the language of non Muslims, but Chinese scholars have anachronistically called a Karakhanid work written by Kashgari as Uyghur. The name Altashari Jungharian Uyghur was used by the Soviet educated Uyghur Qadir Haji in 1927. Topic: <laughs> Classification. The Uyghur language belongs to the Karluk Turkic, Karluk branch of the Turkic language family. It is closely related to Ainu, Lop, Ili Turki, the extinct language Chagatay, the East Karlik languages, and more distantly to Uzbek, which is West Karlik. Early linguistic scholarly studies of Uyghur include Julius Klaproth's 1812 dissertation on language and script of the Uyghurs, a Bonlung über die Sprache und Schrift der Uyghuren, which was disputed by Isaac Jakob Schmidt. In this period, Klaproth correctly asserted that Uyghur was a Turkic language, while Schmidt believed that Uyghur should be classified with Tangut languages. Dialects 
It is widely accepted that Uyghur has three main dialects, all based on their geographical distribution. Each of these main dialects have a number of sub-dialects which all are mutually intelligible to some extent. Central, spoken in an area stretching from Kumal towards south to Yarkand Southern, spoken in an area stretching from Guma towards east to Karkilik Eastern, spoken in an area stretching from Karkilik towards north to Konkal. Central dialects are spoken by 90% of the Uyghur speaking population, while the two other branches of dialects only are spoken by a relatively small minority. Vowel reduction is common in the northern parts of where Uyghur is spoken, but not in the south. <laughs> <laughs> Status Uyghur is spoken by about 8 to 11 million people in total. In addition to being spoken primarily in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of Western China, mainly by the Uyghur people, Uyghur was also spoken by some 300,000 people in Kazakhstan in 1993, some 90,000 in Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan in 1998, 3,000 in Afghanistan and 1,000 in Mongolia, both in 1982. Smaller communities also exist in Albania, Australia, Belgium, Canada, Germany, Indonesia, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Sweden, Taiwan, Tajikistan, Turkey, United Kingdom and the United States, New York City. The Uyghurs are one of the 56 recognized ethnic groups in China, and Uyghur is an official language of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region along with Standard Chinese. As a result, Uyghur can be heard in most social domains in Xinjiang, and also in schools, government and courts. Of the other ethnic minorities in Xinjiang, those populous enough to have their own autonomous prefectures, such as the Kazakhs and the Kyrgyz, have access to schools and government services in their native language. Smaller minorities, however, do not have a choice and must attend Uyghur medium schools. These include the Xibe, Tajiks, Dors, and Russians. In some instances Uyghur parents decide to enroll their children at Mandarin schools over Uyghur schools because of the better quality education offered, leading to many Uyghur children having more trouble learning their native language over Mandarin. However, according to Radio Free Asia, Xinjiang's Houghton government have issued a directive completely banning the use of the Uyghur language at all education levels up to and including secondary school in 2017. About 80 newspapers and magazines are available in Uyghur, five TV channels and ten publishers serve as the Uyghur media. Outside of China, Radio Free Asia and TRT provide news in Uyghur. Phonology Topic <inaudible> Vowels The vowels of the Uyghur language are in their alphabetical order in the Latin script a e e diaresis i o o diaresis u u diaresis there are no diphthongs in Uyghur and when two vowels come together which occurs in some loanwords each vowel retains its individual sound and disregarding vowel length distinction in current Uyghur orthographies. The Uyghur vowel system is characterized by the oppositions front versus back, high versus low and unrounded versus rounded. The Uyghur vowel system may be subcategorized on the basis of height, backness and roundness. It has been argued, within a lexical phonology framework, that e has a back counterpart, and modern Uyghur lacks a clear differentiation between i and Uyghur vowels are by default short, but some phonologists have argued that long vowels also exist because of historical vowel assimilation above and through loanwords. Underlyingly long vowels would resist vowel reduction and devoicing, introduce non-final stress, and be analyzed as vj, or vr, before a few suffixes. However, the conditions in which they are actually pronounced as distinct from their short counterparts have not been fully researched. The high vowels undergo some tensing when they occur adjacent to alveolars s, z, r, l, palatals j, dentals t, d, n, and post-alveolar affricates t, d, e, g, chirac t, Iraq lamp, janubi d, n, by southern use j, y, z, face hundred suda suda in at the water. Both i and Undergo apicalization after alveodental continuance in unstressed syllables, e.g. siler sl ash r u plural zian z j n harm. They are medialist after kai or before l, e.g. till t l tongue shes met kai z m t work job service. 
After velars, uvulars, and f, they are realized as e, e.g. garam, e erm, gram, zelki, chi l q e, his, etc. Nation, fin, fen, fin. Between two syllables that contain a rounded back vowel each, they are realized as back, e.g. kalimu qlm, also his, etc. arm. Any vowel undergoes laxing and backing when it occurs in uvular, q, chi, and laryngeal, glottal. Environments, e.g. qiz, qz, girl, ketik, qtq, yogurt, k, q ash as paper, cum, qm, sand, kole, ql, convenient, qan, qn, blood, egas, es, mouth, hasab, sp, number, he's, s, hunch, hemra, mr, partner, hole, o, wet, hujam, ud, m, assault, halka, lq, ring. Lowering tends to apply to the non-high vowels when a syllable final liquid assimilates to them, e.g. core co stroke look, boldy bld he etc. became, ders d -ash -s lesson, tar t -r narrow. Official Uyghur orthographies do not mark vowel length, and also do not distinguish between, e.g., bilam bulam, knowledge and back, e.g., tylam tlm, my language, these two sounds are in complementary distribution, but phonological analyses claim that they play a role in vowel harmony and are separate phonemes. e, only occurs in words of non-Turkic origin and as the result of vowel raising, Uyghur has systematic vowel reduction or vowel raising as well as vowel harmony. Words usually agree in vowel backness, but compounds, loans, and some other exceptions often break vowel harmony. Suffixes surface with the rightmost back value in the stem, and e are transparent as they do not contrast for backness. Uyghur also has rounding harmony. Topic: <laughs> Consonants. Uyghur voiceless stops are aspirated word initially and intervocalically. The pairs p, b, t, d, k, and q alternate, with the voiced member devoicing in syllable final position, except in word initial syllables. This devoicing process is usually reflected in the official orthography, but an exception has been recently made for certain Perso-Arabic loans. Voiceless phonemes do not become voiced in standard Uyghur, suffixes display a slightly different type of consonant alternation. The phonemes and anywhere in a suffix alternate is governed by vowel harmony, where occurs with front vowels and with back ones. Devoicing of a suffix initial consonant can occur only in the cases of d, t, k, and q, when the preceding consonant is voiceless. Lastly, the rule that per gram, must occur with front vowels and with back vowels can be broken when either k or q in suffix initial position becomes assimilated by the other due to the preceding consonant being such. Lone phonemes have influenced Uyghur to various degrees. d, and, chi, were borrowed from Arabic and have been nativized, while from Persian less so. F only exists in very recent Russian and Chinese loans, since Perso-Arabic and older Russian and Chinese, F became Uyghur, P. Perso-Arabic loans have also made the contrast between K and Q phonemic, as they occur as allophones in native words, the former set near front vowels and the latter near a back vowels. Some speakers of Uyghur distinguish V from with in Russian loans, but this is not represented in most orthographies. Other phonemes occur natively only in limited contexts, i.e., h, only in few interjections, d, and, rarely initially, and, z, only morpheme final. Therefore, the pairs asterisk, t, d, asterisk, and asterisk, s, z, do not alternate. Topic. Phonotactics The primary syllable structure of Uyghur is CV -C -C. Uyghur syllable structure is usually CV or CVC, but CVCC can also occur in some words. When syllable coda clusters occur, CC tends to become CVC in some speakers especially if the first consonant is not a sonorant. In Uyghur, any consonant phoneme can occur as the syllable onset or coda, except for which only occurs in the onset and which never occurs word initially. In general, Uyghur phonology tends to simplify phonemic consonant clusters by means of elision and epenthesis. Orthography The Karlik language started to be written with the Perso-Arabic script in the 10th century upon the conversion of the Kara Khanids to Islam. 
This Perso-Arabic script was reformed in the 20th century with modifications to represent all modern Uyghur sounds including short vowels and eliminate Arabic letters representing sounds not found in modern Uyghur. Unlike many other modern Turkic languages, Uyghur is primarily written using an Arabic alphabet, with four alphabets like Che Pei J and Ga although a Cyrillic alphabet and two Latin alphabets also are in use to a much lesser extent. Unusually for an alphabet based on the Persian, full transcription of vowels is indicated. Among the Arabic family of alphabets, only a few, such as Kurdish, distinguish all vowels. The four alphabets in use today can be seen below. Uyghur Arabic alphabet or UEY Uyghur Cyrillic alphabet or USY The Uyghur New Script or UYY Uyghur Latin alphabet or ULI in the table below the alphabets are shown side by side for comparison, together with a phonetic transcription in the International Phonetic Alphabet. <laughs> Grammar Uyghur is an agglutinative language with a subject-object verb word order. Nouns are inflected for number and case, but not gender and definiteness like in many other languages. There are two numbers, singular and plural, and six different cases, nominative, accusative, dative, locative, ablative and genitive. Verbs are conjugated for tense, present and past, voice, causative and passive, aspect, continuous, and mood, e.g. ability. Verbs may be negated as well. Topic. Lexicon The core lexicon of the Uyghur language is of Turkic stock, but due to different kinds of language contact through the history of the language, it has adopted many loanwords. Kazakh, Uzbek and Chagatai are all Turkic languages which have had a strong influence on Uyghur. Many words of Arabic origin have come into the language through Persian and Tajik, which again have come through Uzbek, and to a greater extent, Chagatai. Many words of Arabic origin have also entered the language directly through Islamic literature after the introduction of the Islamic religion around the 10th century. Chinese in Xinjiang and Russian elsewhere had the greatest influence on Uyghur. Loanwords from these languages are all quite recent, although older borrowings exist as well, such as borrowings from Dungan, a Mandarin language spoken by the Dungan people of Central Asia. A number of loanwords of German origin have also reached Uyghur through Russian. Below are some examples of loanwords which have entered the Uyghur language. Topic. See also. Languages of China. Turkic languages. Uyghur people. <laughs>